So, I, you know, before I begin, let me kind of introduce the panel member. Uh, Dr. Ashish Choksi, he's the test architect at uh, Harbinger and a fellow member of the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. Uh, for the last 14 years, he's been actively pursuing his interest in uh, software quality management with agile methodologies. And uh, open source test automation is something of a kind of a uh, second nature to him. And within Harbinger, uh, where we are working with startups, enterprise, ISVs, and uh, you know software companies, including high tech, uh, his experience uh, in the test automation and web-based applications, you know, that really proves a lot, uh, you know, uh, handy. And that is what the clients have really appreciated. In fact, you know, the presentation that we have prepared today is something that we do internally with our clients on the subjects for which we provide, uh, you know, advisory services. So we just thought of using this uh, webinar as to kind of, you know, share across this information that we have and our knowledge that we have. Uh, the second panel member is uh, Umesh Kanade. He's the uh, General Manager Technology Solutions at Harbinger Systems. Uh, he carries a 14 years of rich experience, uh, in fact, all the way from uh, joining as a uh, program engineer, all the way now his heading is the pre-sales R&D and technology leadership at Harbinger Systems. He's uh, involved in all kind of aspects when we talk about startups and ISVs, and he kind of, uh, you know, guides them on the architect and uh, technology selection processes. So coming back to our session today, uh, I mean, most of us are aware of LinkedIn updates, Facebook news feeds, and Twitter tweets. And, you know, it's not an open secret that these are among the most common and successful examples of real-time web, you know, applications, which is the topic of our today's webinar. What today we are going to do is kind of dwell more into it, try to look at to which are the building blocks, what kind of technologies, what kind of open source tools or frameworks that can be used. And uh, the most interesting part that we have kept is at the end of the session, or prior to the end of the session, uh, we have planned is an, uh, you know, a demo of a real-time collaborative app. You know, please do, please uh, stay tuned for that. You know, that is the real icing on the cake. And, uh, you know, most of us uh, being in the technology field are aware that the background of real time lies in the evolving and disruptive technology landscape. And, you know, combine that with the lowering computing pricing. I mean, the, the stage is getting set, you know. Uh, I mean, we all know it's been a 10 plus years kind of a real time part of it. The gaming applications have been uh, using real time. But uh, now we see a lot of proliferation uh, towards the B2C and in, even in some cases uh, in the B2B part of it. So I think this is where we kind of get into the whole part of it. So, uh, you know, uh, without any due, so let's get into the topic. So let me hand it over to Umesh and uh, Dr. Ashish. Thank you, Sachin. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, I'm Umesh. I and Ashish will today provide more insights uh, into how the web applications were traditionally built, uh, their pros and cons, and further their limitations with scalability. And we'll look into why it is kind of hot now and what has fundamentally changed at technology layer. Uh, that enables us to provide the real-time experience in web context. Yes, uh, we will also discuss how the trend has evolved, what are the benefits gained and the benchmarks, and what are our options of technology stack to reliably build these applications. So, um, Collaboration is uh, more of a working practice whereby individuals work together to a common purpose to achieve business benefits. For example, a collaboration among a set of musicians to create a wonderful piece of orchestra. And it's a great sight to see how in real time coordination and synchronization can achieve amazing effects of experience. In modern times, key to make a successful collaboration is the basis where and make it happen faster in real time. In the business domain, it means a faster exchange of information. Thus, 
the concept of real time pertains to a system that is capable of processing a piece of information and makes it available within a few milliseconds or virtually immediately. We had um, online bookings, talk ticker, news feeds, sports sites, it lets all the scores updated and so on. But all these online applications have been around since long. What has changed is the experience is now much more demanding. As the customer, as the consumers expect more from their websites and apps, a majority of newer size mobile apps are adding features that require data push. The newer applications are not only responsive, but more collaborative with massive user base, making complex scenarios of synchronization across multiple stations and devices. So, uh, so Ashish, how uh, business will enable collaboration? Well, if you believe that those visiting your website are your prospect customers, then you may want to keep in touch with them. The question is how to do this. Uh, here is one model of web-based business collaboration. Typically, engaging your prospect customers is a process in steps. First, you connect with them. Some of the ways to connect are sign up, email, blog sharing, and user commenting. Then, to get into phase of interaction, here you want to become quick and responsive. So, you might want to add a real-time chat window and this sets the stage for user engagement. The challenge is to continue the engagement and this can happen more effectively if we provide a user experience of being connected real time. All right, so is the online application access from web browser, how does the user interact with the business functionality? Is the browser communication not the real time one? Well, let us understand this, how uh, this is done traditionally. Traditionally, browser makes a request to the server. It gets the information and the connection is broken. Now, the information is real time only at the time of request. As the time passes, this is information becomes stale and passed. Now, if information gets updated on the server side, there is no way for the server to connect to the browser and update it. So, for the user to remain updated, they should request to the server again and again. This is half duplex model. Imagine a phone conversation. Every time you want to talk, you place a button. You speak out your message, then you place another button. And this time, your partner must wait patiently. And your partner takes up the channel and starts talking and you go on to the listen mode. Yeah, this sounds familiar. I mean, it's like uh, those walkie-talkie toys the kids play with. Uh, I mean, these are great but not the efficient form of communication. Uh, but, I, but then I see um, some examples like some sports websites. They are able to update the scores in my browser without me hitting the page refresh button, right? So how does that kind of a website work? You're right, Omish. Uh, engineers have devised some ways in HTTP to keep browsers updated. These approaches are typically polling, long polling, and streaming. Together, these techniques were grouped in an umbrella term called Comet programming. Let us see how Comet helps us. With Ajax polling, we make HTTP request to server asynchronously and periodically. This works in terms of this works, but in terms of network resources, it's a wastage. I would say pretty bad waste of resources. To understand this, let us see the example. If the client first makes a request to the server, and then it asks, uh, "Is there a new data?" Server says, "No. Connection is broken." and passes. Client makes once more the request to the server, is there a new data? Server says no. 
time passes. Client makes once more some request to the web server. Is there a new data? Server says, yes, here you go, and connection is broken. Now you can see, for getting a piece of data, we have to make so many empty requests. The HTTP connection is quite an overhead on application servers. Let's say we set AJAX polling at an interval of one second, and for 1,000 simultaneous users, there will be 60,000 requests per minute. Obviously, scaling an AJAX-based application is a big deal. So, strategy was, was changed slightly to improve the resource usage. This approach is called long polling. With long polling, server doesn't uh, close the connection after serving the response. It is rather kept alive for a set period of time. Meaning, the HTTP request is created for a set period of time to listen for responses from the server. If there is a new data on the server, the server will send it and close the request. Otherwise, the request will time out and connection is closed. Compared with standard polling, this is much more efficient. It saves on network overhead and reduces the number of requests. This is much better approach as it provides a mechanism by which server can alert the client about new data without requiring any action on the part of client. The side effect of this technique is once long polling HTTP connection is open, the only way for the browser to send a new request is by opening a new HTTP connection. This results in doubling of resources on the server. Two, if there is a high message volume between the client and server, for example, the case of bidding portal, the connection is closed as soon as the data is updated. The client has to make a fresh request for updated data, and this is as good as or as bad as the AJAX polling. Oh, okay, so uh, can there be a mechanism to persist or uh, maybe hold the connection and even after the, the, the response is sent and there should not be any timeout as possible? Yes, you brought in the concept of uh, what is called HTTP streaming. Now in this mode, communication between client and server is as follows. Client says, I am looking for a new data and the connection to remain open forever. Server accepts it. Server says, OK, and time passes. And then server says, hey, there is some data. Here you go. Client says, data received. Thanks. And the connection remains alive for more data. This is good even for high message volumes from server to client. The issue is if client has to make a fresh request to the server, it has got to open new connections. Thus, once more, there is duplication of resources on server side. Besides, it is keeping connections open indefinitely. Hmm. Looks like we have a good alternative with HTTP. Uh, but are those good enough to deal with today's uh, real-time challenges? For example, I mean, there are lots of overheads with HTTP requests, right? Uh, I mean, there is a long list of header parameters like user agent, referrer, connection keep alive, connection type or content type and so on. And besides there are cookies to be submitted. So all these kind of in adds up and increases the message size and leads to significant increase in the latency. So uh, I mean thus every HTTP request is made heavier by approximately one to two kilobyte of data per request. So thus scalability and achieving the real time response is the uh, you know the key challenge. So, uh, I mean, it means that the HTTP is expensive. Uh, so, Ashish, uh, I mean, what 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 are the some good alternatives uh, from the modern technologies to overcome such challenges? The latest HTML5 offers new feature called WebSockets, which connects browser with server with full duplex channel, meaning either end the server or browser can send message at any time. The WebSocket do away many of the issues we had in traditional comment technologies. It's a bi-directional single socket connection. 
So what happens is a browser opens a socket pointing to the server and the same connection is reused from client to server and from server to the client. So it is a full duplex communication. You don't keep making and breaking the web socket in a web based system. It persists the HTML pages once it is made and you can send or receive the message at any time. Another feature of WebSocket is the uh, overhead associated with the message frame is uh, now reduced to a mere two bytes. A lighter message eventually transforms to a faster delivery. And there is one more important aspect of uh, message size. Usually your upload bandwidth is almost one-tenth of your download bandwidth. Thus, at any time, a bulkier message is lot more slow to upload and it kills time. So, WebSocket makes a big mark when it comes to response time. Ah, oh, this is exciting. Uh, but you know, uh, everything in web revolves around HTTP. So, I mean, how does this WebSocket gels with the HTTP protocol? Yes, uh, WebSocket is very friendly with uh, HTTP system. First thing is uh, it uses HTTP header connection update, which means we are creating a new channel of communication. And there is a WebSocket listening on server ports. WebSocket uh, listens on port 80. And for secure WebSocket, WSS, it listens on port 43. Thus, the message in WebSocket drivers the firewall and proxies with ease. Okay, so um, it's a separate connection being created. I mean, it's not the same HTTP connection, right? Uh, so how server does ensure that this new connection exists? I mean, from the same HTTP source. This is a very good question. The uh, WebSocket and server-side cookies, for example, session cookies, when it is created. So uh, you can have server-side logic to authenticate the new connections. Oh, wonderful. I mean, this is getting interesting. Uh, I mean, just tell me how it works. We need WebSocket-aware servers. We typically use Socket.io that runs over Node.js for creating web sockets. While our application servers may be in any technology, it may be .NET or Java or any other technology like Ruby or Python or similar things. Mm -hmm. We often recommend using Socket.io over Node.js. Uh, Node.js is written on top of V8 Chrome, the JavaScript engine that provides JavaScript interface at server end. The advantage of using Node.js is in its simplicity. It is non-blocking, single thread, and asynchronous. The whole point is, it is a lot simpler and reliable to create Node-based server. We can put it behind load balancer that would direct the WebSocket uh, traffic to Node server. On the browser side, We have modern web browsers by default which have built-in support for web sockets. For the browsers where we do not have support for the web socket, uh, we can create socket by using socket.io.js. Here is a simple all code snippet on how to create sockets with socket.io. All right, so uh, I mean what I can see here is uh, there are two components. Um, one on the client side, which is uh, JavaScript, uh, socket io.js that runs inside the browser. And on the server side, a, a library for node.js, uh, what we are calling it socket.io. Yes, uh, and for modern browsers, there is a inbuilt support for WebSocket, so the life is still simpler. But uh, this socket.io with this socket IO, you get another benefit also. Like you can make asynchronous IO and you can 
broadcast to multiple sockets and you can also store data associated with each client. Let us also see quickly how web sockets are programmed. Here are the events and methods of socket class. Basically, we have four types of events. When the socket is created, when there is a message, when there is some error, or we close the socket. We use socket.send to send the data over the server. Now let us look at WebSocket APIs. We have socket on open, on message, and on close events. So on server side, we can write logic when we are pushing the message in respective sockets. For example, we may be selective or we may want to publish the message to all. Oh, um, this sounds simple. I mean, this is uh, absolutely what we want for the kind of interactivity we are looking for in a business application. And so, uh, so what are the immediate benefits uh, of using this web socket over traditional HTTP connection and a comment-based approach that we just saw? I will refer to the data from websocket.org. We can see that immediate benefit is seen in overheads of the connection. Let's say we do polling at the rate of one request per second, which uh, is really not correct with WebSockets, but let's make this assumption. Then the HTTP request have shown to require approximately 6.6 .6 megabits per second compared to 0 0.015 megabits per second in case of web sockets for 1000 connected users. If we scale this to 100,000 connected users pulling each second, we see a substantial amount of resources consumption at the HTTP based system. If we see these numbers on a graphical scale, here is what it looks like. What it means, the web socket based server with modest amount of resources is lot better than the HTTP based interactivity servers. You can see the WebSocket servers requirement in orange bands while the HTTP servers uh, hardware requirements are shown in blue bands. Wow, this is very nice. Uh, I mean, it looks like uh, we can manage much more with single server and really have massive user base supported with much less server hardware. It's lightweight. Okay, so this is all about text-based interaction. Um, are there some ways to also collaborate with data having media uh, in maybe like an audio and video in real time? Recently, there has been a lot of interest on creating audio and video based interactivities from within the browser. Google has open sourced a project called WebRTC. As of now, it has been supported by Chrome and Firefox only. With WebRTC, we can set up a peer-to-peer -peer connection to share audio and video data files without need of any software or plugin to be installed in your computer. You just have a browser and make a live one-on-one -on -one session for collaboration in real time. This is amazing. So, uh, you can have video conferencing as well as sharing data in real time just through your browser and this is surely hard. So, uh, I can see you definitely need a real-time collaboration in your web application. Uh, you may have scenarios like uh, maybe social networking application uh, where users are commenting which uh, should be pushed on the other connected user scenarios uh, in real time. Or you may have an online gaming where massive multiplayer games or live events are to be seen for every connected session. Or if you have an online bidding portal where latest bids and asks should always be synchronized. 
or in case of a product store or commerce application, the logistics updates like inventory control, shipping or tracking, tracking of these inventory and to be shared with all the stakeholders in real time. Or it may be a collaborative platform for authoring, designing, idea sharing, uh, the web reading or virtual classrooms and so on. It is there everywhere and you need it. Right, so now let's see an example how real-time collaboration is typically helping interactive web reader kind of scenario. So we plan to have a, a demo uh, to an application. Uh, are having few users to annotate a web page and you can either see it in the We'll probably we'll see it in the web meeting uh, where the real time responses are uh, are collaborated uh, together. You can see the effective uh, real time response. So Ashish, uh, while I set up the two browsers to point to this application, uh, maybe you want to describe this application in more detail. Sure. We have quickly created a WebSocket server and it is deployed with an application that is serving a HTML page. Now this may be a virtual classroom scenario where several students are interacting to comprehend the subject. This is just not a chat window. We can see that the interactions are done in context of a web page and it is presented to the second browser window through the WebSocket based channel. So, Umesh is setting up the system. We can see it. Uh, we can see two browsers. Okay. All right. So, I'm logging in as Umesh. And I'm also in the other browser window. I'm logging in as Ashish. And we have our colleagues also online um, who are uh, interacting on the same web page contents. Oh, now I immediately see a new comment has been added for the word WebSocket in the web content web page. And it's Nitish uh, who is asking what is WebSocket? And you can see Ashish also uh, received the same message. Uh, whereas I have an uh, interface to comment on it. So maybe let me respond to him the new call. You can see uh, in real time Ashish also received response and it has reflected to all the other users connected uh, on the same web page. And it creates in real time, you are collaborating within the same context of uh, application. Let me, okay, there is another comment. So now Nitish is asking, what is it for? Let's respond to him. So while I'm typing, there is already a response from Sachin for Nitish's question. So you can see within no time, uh, time interval, we have collaboration that is happening in real time. Let me just thank Sachin. All right, so I mean that's the, the real uh, the beauty of these technologies which are uh, enabling and making the collaboration very effective within the context of your web content and it's all within your web browser. All right, so, uh, so you know, Uvesh and uh, Dr. Ashish, you know, indeed, uh, you know, the information was no doubt valuable, but I guess, you know, seeing this app, you know, in real time basis, you know, the concept is, uh, you know, mind-boggling, you know, you can just kind of think about it, 
how it really would help across industries, say financial industries. You know, there's a real-time event that's taking place. There are institutional uh, trading desks or you know big hedge funds who would really be concerned about the real-time you know price movements, which have a kind of uh, huge million-dollar kind of implications, or for that matter, healthcare or even the logistics part of it. So indeed, this is I think uh, you know something that is to be watched out for. Though it has been for the last 10 years, I think it's ripe to be kind of a mass embrace. So once again, uh, you know, uh, thank you for sharing your information with us and indeed for this demo. So we would now be open for question and answers. So you know, please do enter in your or post your questions to us using the question and answer panel on the lower right uh, panel of the go to webinar window. And it's interesting, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, the kind of question that I have, you know, first one, you know, it really makes sense since yesterday we had the new iOS launch. So the question is, uh, how does this uh, concept of real-time collaboration work in case of mobile applications? Right. Uh, yeah, well, certain mobile apps are no different case as such. Uh, typically, mobile apps connect with server using HTTP and you may have web mobile app or native application with web view. Um, the latest mobile browser and the web view component are supporting the web socket and you may also find third party plugins for some frameworks like PhoneGap uh, which are cross platform solutions too. Okay, great. So uh, I mean there's a request if we could go back to the websocket.org stat that was listed. Can we bring that up on the screen? Okay. You know, I really like this question. You know, they are saying is, okay, you have the stats which is listed from websocket.org. Uh, uh, the user is more interested in finding out, you know, what has been your production experience with such kind of applications. I mean, do you have something from your own PD that you would like to kind of, you know, share across with us? Uh, Ashish, you want to comment on this? Yes, definitely. We have uh, implemented an enterprise application for our clients in the area of uh, online learning, gamification, and uh, bidding applications. We have seen it in life. Uh, for example, for bidding applications with uh, thousand simultaneous users uh, using or taking part in five uh, simultaneous uh, bidding events, we have achieved the response time uh, within a single uh, you know, within a second with a single WebSocket server. Wow, fantastic! You know, if this is just in the area of online learning. I mean, you know, we could just uh, imagine the kind of impact it would have in wider industries such as financials or healthcare, for that matter, which seems to be a new kind of or a force. Mm -hmm or area of focus for the uh, you know, US uh, government itself. So thanks uh, Dr. Ashish for that and uh, yeah the question is uh, you know your demo was really helpful it does bring about uh, the real-time concept clearly but can you kind of you know give a bit more or try to uh, you know give a bit more information as to how this would really uh, you know have business benefit to us and uh, you know this is someone who is uh, from the business part of it, it seems. So is interested more in the business benefits of real-time collaboration. I mean, the question is, if we could have done without this for a couple of years, I mean, now suddenly, you know, is it something that we have to do? Oh, I mean, it's a strong case for business benefits. I mean, any collaboration will enable your prospects to um, express themselves, and this is a vital information for uh, a business intelligence. So we should store all the messages or should analyze them, uh, extract better uh, you know, business sense through technologies of maybe uh, analytics and big data and so on. So if I understand that correct, uh, Umesh, it means, uh, I mean, one uh, key important is the uh, business intelligence part of it, which really helps me at the back end. But uh, does this also have some implication on the uh, front end part of it? I mean, is there a relation, something that we could have out of that? Uh, 
Well, yeah, I mean, that's an interesting point. Um, uh, so this is where you are uh, usually feeling the benefits of WebSocket, right? The popular UI frameworks like jQuery or um, Peter Bootstrap, uh, these are now providing the WebSocket binding based UI control. Uh, these can, you know, render visualization with data in real time. For example, you may have a um, progress bar uh, based on server status or a dynamically changing chart control based on some, you know, server parameters or a, a typical autocomplete text box or drop down that we have, right? So listing all these based on user typing and in real time it is getting the data sets from the server. And of course, you can create some custom controls of your own, abstracting the web socket interface too. So that's where the, the front end experience is vastly changed with the web socket technology. Wow. So this really kind of you know completes it from both the back end as well as the front end part of it. Uh, okay. So the next question is okay. I think this might be more of interest to Dr. Ashish. Uh, you know, I have an existing application in PHP and looking to add real-time chat feature for customer engagement. How can I go about it? Sure. Uh, first, to be recommend uh, using Node.js and putting your application behind a load balancer. In load balancer, you can write rules to forward the HTTP request to your application server which is PHP in your case, and the entire WebSocket request will be sent to Node server. We can also create a REST-based interface at the Node server, and it can be used to integrate the Node server with the application server. Okay, fantastic. I think this, I need to ask this question, you know, I just asked about open source. So there's a question on .NET. I have uh, I have a .NET application. Can I use a WebSocket? Uh, yes, yeah, surely. I mean, WebSocket is standard from W3C and part of the HTML5 specification, uh, and definitely an open source one. So other technologies that we mentioned here, like Node.js and Socket.io, are open source technologies. But when you are using the .NET as well. Uh, you can use WebSocket using libraries called ASP.NET SignalR. Uh, so SignalR is also an open source and accessible through GitHub. And I mean, it's an abstraction layer. With from the C sharp, you can uh, create WebSocket as well. Okay. So very similar question is uh, what frameworks are available to develop a WebSocket server apart from Node.js? So as we talked about uh, SignalR, there is another one which is Pusher, uh, again, that's a subscription-based model, uh, more for proprietary and paid one. But yes, uh, these are some similar ones. And I won't call Node.js, but it's the package of Node.js, which is Socket.io, which is primarily focusing the... Node.js only provides a JavaScript interface runtime. Right. It is Socket.io, which essentially creates the socket. Right. right. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, I, I guess we have a couple of more questions, but that's more in terms of, uh, you know, Harbinger experience with uh, kind of implementing that, anything that can be kind of referenced. So, you know, well, you know, since this is just a webinar, we just thought we'll put out this information. But those audience members who are interested in knowing more about our web application expertise and case studies, uh, may I ask you to please visit uh, www.harbinger-systems.com. You know, you will find, uh, you know, uh, the entire uh, information listed out over there. And uh, that's something that you can kind of consume it at, uh, offline. So, you know, uh, I think we'll have to take a hard stop now. Uh, we have a lot of questions and uh, I think what we would be doing is we'll be creating a document with all your questions and the answers. Uh, all that that uh, Umesh and Dr. Ashish, uh, you know, answered right now and the unanswered questions as well as and uh, we're going to make it sure that it's going to be available to everyone. So, uh, you know, if you, do, if you have not got your question during our live session, uh, you know, we would be sending it out to you. The answers would be coming out. And uh, just a last, uh, you know, uh, request in terms of housekeeping. Uh, we have an, uh, you know, we would 
want you to particip uh, participate in a survey. Uh, you know, once we kind of uh, close this meeting from our end, uh, there would be a pop-up at, at your end for a survey. Uh, you know, the whole intention is to get your feedback so as to, you know, really help us internally. So we would appreciate if you can uh, spend a minute or so and respond to the survey form. So once again, uh, thank you for taking out your time and spending it with us. I hope the information from uh, Umesh and Dr. Ashish was